Hi, Tex Andrews with the Lights On Project. And let's have one last word on the Relight tool. And this has to do with the Tool Settings tab and the Color Selection tab. These two tabs uh, behave a little differently with the Relight tool uh, for whatever reason. First, we'll tackle the Tool Settings tab. As we've shown in some other videos, you can use blend modes uh, with the Tool Settings tab. And in, in this series of videos, we also use the Invert Mask button. But you can use blend modes to add um, to uh, the effects that your tool is having uh, in the image. And typically, these are continue to be contrast changes. But because this is already such a powerful contrast tool, you have to be careful with your blend modes. So we're in normal mode right now. Multiply is a mode that can be used to good effect with some tools and maybe not in this case. You've got to wind the tool opacity way down and it's still not working. So bear this in mind as you start using blend modes with the Relight tool. There are ones that seem to be fairly effective, like Screen, for instance, is not a bad one to use. Um, and it does create a bit of a different effect than the normal, lightens things up a little bit. So experiment with these, but understand that you will find that these blend modes behave a little differently with the Relight tool than they do with other tools. Next, in the Color Selection tab. Now, this is a very, very powerful tab and part of your array of um, aspects of tools that help you make them incredibly flexible uh, in your editing process. And with certain tools, for instance, the Hue Saturation tool, uh, and even with the Zone Mapper, the Color Selection tab can be very, very effectively used. It's a little trickier in the Relight tool. So let's use the eyedropper and say, OK, well, we want to have these effects really only uh, work on our sort of buff colored landscape. And I do that, and you see suddenly we're getting some perhaps unexpected effects. We play around with the range slider. We can slide that down a little bit, and that's not really helping, and it doesn't help that way. We start to have to play around with the luminosity sliders, moving them up, down. That helps a little bit. It's not to say you can't use the color selection tab, but it's trickier to use. Let's go back. That counts for you know these buttons as well. Again, the range slider. That helps a little bit. But it isn't as easy to use the Color Selection tab uh, with the Relight tool uh, as it is with other tools. And the other thing that can happen uh, with the Color Selection tab, there are certain things you can do that will start posterizing your image. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get that effect going. See that? I just took a sample of a little gray area here, fairly neutral one, and look what happened to my sky. That is a pretty ugly effect. Look at what happened to the ground. Don't like this at all. Note that the luminosity slider has simply selected this little spot in here, and there's no feathering. You can indeed help this by moving the feathering around, but again, the Color Selection tab is a tricky one uh, when you use it with the Relight tool. The Relight, I think it has to do with the fact that the Relight tool is already so powerful that when you engage the Color Selection tab or engage some of the blend modes uh, in the Tool Settings tab, you're just creating a little bit too much power uh, in your Relight tool and sometimes it's better to just leave it alone and ignore these tab settings for this particular tool. Just use normal. Don't worry about the color selection tab. Do all your work up here. Now, you may find that there is something you can do down here. More power to you. 
but that's just a caution to you um, that these tabs work a little bit differently with the Relight tool than they do with other tools.